Hello, this is Hasina Mumtaz welcoming you to NTV's weekly news highlights. Hifajat Islam has alleged that its supporters are being obstructed from attending its marches, which are being held across various cities in Bangladesh. On Friday afternoon, Hifajat Islam leaders called upon the government to remove the obstacles from their path, otherwise, they warned they may take a more hardline approach. The leaders also said that whether or not there should be continuous hartals will be announced on Saturday at the Shapla Chata in Dhaka. Hifajat Islam has already brought out many procession, uh, processions in many parts of the city. Our reporter Shafiq Shahin reports. During a huge march organised by Hifajat Islam, they made 13 demands which included the following. Bringing to justice the Shabag protesters and bloggers who have attacked Islam and the Prophet Wasallam. After Jumma prayers on Fridays, protesters attended from various masjids and madrasas in support of the march organised by Hifajat Islam. The Mirpur No. 1 branch of Hifajat Islam brought out a procession which turned into a summer besh at Mirpur No. 2. Leaders of Hifajat Islam called on the government not to obstruct their long march on Saturday. However, the transport network, network has been disrupted across many cities of the capital by the Vehicle Owners Association. This has meant that many supporters of the party have not been able to attend the long march. The Maha Sachib of Hifajat Islam, Maulana Junaid Babunogri, has alleged that the government is behaving like hypocrites towards them, a behaviour for which the people of Bangladesh will punish them in the forthcoming national elections, he warned. The leaders of Hifajat Islam have expressed concerns that they fear that Awami League and Jubo League leaders may attack their peaceful march. They have said that until their 13 demands are met, they will continue to demonstrate at Shapla Chata in Dhaka. Finance Minister Abul Mal Abdul Muhit is reported as saying that the election of the Board of Directors of the Grameen Bank is undemocratic and the government will take action. The Finance Minister said this last Monday at the Secretariat press briefing. He added that the government wants to increase the revenue of Grameen Bank. The minister also said that although there is strong evidence against the big names involved, Dudok has not yet taken any action. Our reporter Hassan Ul Shawan reports. A committee was formed to look into irregularities and other related concerns surrounding the Grameen Bank. On Monday, the chairman and the finance minister held a meeting to discuss this. Afterwards, the minister said there needs to be a change in the undemocratic practices of election to the board of Grameen Bank. Criticising Dr. Muhammad Yunus, he said, at present, the election process involves Mr. Yunus selecting members of the board at will. He confirmed that the government plans to take action. The minister also spoke about the situation involving the Hallmark Group. He said that he wants to see utilisation of their assets. However, the situation is a matter for the bank and its clients. He also added that although some big wigs have been implicated, Dudok is yet to take action in the matter. The intelligence agencies have said that cocktail and petrol bombs which are being used during hotels are actually being manufactured in the capital, Dhaka. The agencies have identified some of these groups who are making these life-threatening weapons mainly for monetary gain. They say most of these groups do not have any political affiliations but are selling these cocktails at very high prices simply for financial gain. Some chemical shops in old Dhaka are being kept under observation by the intelligence agencies. Didar Chadri reports. These types of life-threatening explosives are the weapon of choice during picketing and hotels and are being handmade locally in Bangladesh. Re regrettably, there have been a number of deaths from the use of these weapons during hotels. The intelligence agencies say that as a result of the high use of these weapons in the past few weeks during picketing, they have started an investigation into the matter. The police say that on many occasions they have been informed that the weapons will be used and as a result they have managed to stop incidents from occurring. Most of these groups who make these weapons do not have a political affiliation, but this has now become a lucrative business for them. Following the BDR revolt of 25th and 26th February 2009, the then Home Minister Sahara Khatun promised to pardon the revolting BDR men subject to certain conditions. This week, she testified in court during the hearing to try these men. She testified in Dhaka Metropolitan Sessions Court that, in 2009, she had been having a number of meetings at the Ambala Hotel. After this, she embarked on a journey to Pilkana. During her journey, they approached an area where all the lights on the road had been switched off and a group of BDR men surrounded her vehicle. During the ambush, they promised to lay down their arms. They then took her to the parade ground instead of to the arms room and there they laid down their arms. 
Sahara Khatun said as a result, many army men and families were rescued. She was questioned by defence lawyers who also alleged that she has kept many things secret which she should have disclosed. BMP chairperson and leader of the opposition Begum Khalid Azir's office in Gulshan was shot at by miscreants. The BMP alleges that a number of offenders rode past the office, firing three rounds of bullets and then quickly disappearing on motorcycles. At the time, a meeting of 18 doll had just taken place and Begum Khalid Azir was said to be present in the office. The police are investigating the incident. Mirza Fakhrul Aslam Alongir, along with other BMP leaders, says that these were bullets shot against democracy. The senior vice chairman of BNP, Mr. Tariq Rahman, has performed Umrah in the holy city of Mecca. On Wednesday at 8 o'clock, he, along with his wife, daughter, his mother-in-law, doctor and other members of his family arrived at Jeddah King Abdulaziz Airport. There, they took a brief rest at a hotel before resuming their journey to the holy city of Mecca, where they performed Umrah on Thursday morning. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching and see you again at the same time next week. Allah Hafiz. <laughs>